What up, everybody? And Happy New Year to you. Sitting here with Mom. And uh, spend a little time with Mom before the New Year come in. And uh, yeah, Mom's looking good. And uh, gotta stick by my mama. 2020, same old, same old. Gonna be here with mom. And uh, we gonna make it. We gonna make it, mom. Well, she's sleep. <laughs> but, uh, oh, no, she ain't sleep. But, uh, yeah, so. Give you a little update on that trailer. So yeah, I did drop that trailer off, and uh, I left it at the gate. Kind of bothered me, you know what I mean? Um, because uh, I didn't know if I was in the right or the wrong, or uh, if I was wrong. But you know, I I called a couple of friends. And they talked to me and encouraged me. Uh, uh, shout out to my man, Ezell. Gave me that encouragement. I needed that brother. Thanks. From the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Um, yeah, so the dispatcher told me. Okay, so I, I called. As soon as I got to a truck stop and I used another truck driver's phone. And, uh, yeah, so he told me that he seen my message for the cash advance that I asked to, keep, to get my phone uh, on because my phone was off. So um, he told me on the phone that he ignored that message because it was the weekend and they didn't give out cash advances on the weekend, which he could have he could have messaged me back that, but he he chose to ignore that. So um, the message about the code for the gate um, he never responded to either. So if he seen the message and I sent the messages all at the same time, um, my arrival. And uh, told him that I was at the gate. I was at, I was at the terminal, which you know the the load delivered to that terminal, and that was my in trip. And that's the micro I sent when I got there. It was in trip because I was at the spot at the at the place where I was supposed to deliver the load, and I couldn't get in the gate. Sent messages, told him that I couldn't. And uh, so I offered, after he done got on the phone and fussed me out about leaving the, the load at the gate, I offered to go back and get the load. And I said, I tell you what, I need two things from you. Because my clock won, my clock, I only had five hours on my clock, and I needed three hours to get home. Uh, and anybody know, any truck driver know, unless you're going to run your clock out to the last minute, you need at least about two hours on your clock, you know, when, before you start looking for somewhere to shut down. And that's depending on the time and whatever, because you could be on an off-ramp somewhere or wherever on the side of the road trying to shut down to get your hours back. So I told him I need two things from you. I need you to pay me to go back, go back another hour and a half to get that load and and put it in the gate once you give me the gate code. And I need you to fix my clock. So he told me that um, he wasn't gonna do none of that. So you know he said he'll get somebody to take it in the gate. And told me not to worry about it. So that was that. So yeah. So um, 
that's what it is. Um, and nothing more I can do about it, you know. But a friend of mine told me that in the beginning, you know, because like I was saying a long time ago, well, not a long time ago, about, you know, a couple of weeks back, somebody called called in on me and said that I was cutting in and out of lanes. And uh, uh, evidently, it must have been, I don't know if it was a truck driver or whoever it was, I don't know. But I do know that they were trying to, there were two trucks trying to hold uh, lanes back. You know, it was, uh, I don't know how many lanes were, it might have been four lanes or whatever. Uh, but there were two trucks trying to hold lanes back and the other two lanes that, that were going real slow wasn't moving at all. But they was trying to hold back the other two lanes that were moving. I guess to slow down traffic or whatever they're trying to do or trying to make room for whoever. But I got past those two trucks. I got a break. Um, there was a car that stopped in front of one of those trucks. And that truck had to slow down. And once that car got in front of that truck, I came from the other lane and got in that lane where that car had slowed that other truck down and passed them and and uh yeah went on about my business so uh i don't know if that pissed somebody off or whatever i don't know if the car that slowed the other truck down might have been trying to slow that other truck down thinking trying to do the same thing i was doing so they could stop blocking off traffic i i don't know who it was but um I didn't hit no car, I didn't hit nothing, I didn't hit nobody. Uh, I got to my destination safe, and uh, hey, I was called in on. So after after that, um, yeah, they started acting kind of funny, you know. Might have been that or whatever like that, but a friend of mine told me, said, yeah, my miles were getting low, they were getting short, they weren't really giving me a whole lot of miles. And uh, just tripping off stuff. I mean, uh, I parked my truck at the terminal in Raleigh. And first time, I don't know, the guy that was there at the terminal, the, the manager at that terminal, said that I was parking too tight on on that terminal. Now, they uh, already got trucks there, the... the uh, which I was LTL, uh, and then they got uh, local trucks that run just the local routes, I guess the city routes or whatever. But they got trucks, and they put their bobtails against the fence. Okay, so he wanted me to park against the fence. There was no room on the fence because all all the the the, the yard dog and then the uh, the other trucks, the, the the city trucks and all that, all that was parked on the fence and that's a real and the, and the yard is real small anyway so uh, they put loads I guess they put loads in a row or whatever like that and I've seen other truck drivers park over there in that row that they put the loads in because they ain't had nowhere else to park and I was under a load so I parked over there too I was still under a load they said I parked too tight over there I don't, I don't know what that meant but and I went in there and I talked to the other guy that was in there and he said it was ridiculous when there's no room to park on the fence anyway. You know, so that was the first time. The second time they come, they when I called them and I told them, you know, uh, well, I asked them, was I under anything or did they have another load for me to, to uh, take um, what well, was yesterday? And um, so they said they've been trying to get up with me or whatever like that because I parked my truck in the middle of the terminal. Now, why would I park my truck in the middle of the terminal? You know, in the, in the middle of the, in the, I guess they say in the middle of the yard or whatever. I don't know what they were really talking about, but I guess they were saying that I parked in the middle of the yard or something. Absolutely false. And I told them on the phone that was a lie. A lie. So they're lying on me. I don't know. Trying to piss me off or whatever like that. So, you know, I think it's real. I think that it, it, that job really ran its course. 
I don't really care about what none of y'all uh, 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 20 year vets got to say. I don't care about y'all that these haters or whatever, or y'all that uh, don't like black drivers or whatever like that. And, you know, and, and yeah, I know you're out there or whatever. You're going to have something negative to say about it or whatever just because if you, you don't like me anyway. You know, don't know me from Adam and I don't know you. But, you know, you don't like me for some reason, but it's all good. Much love to you. Uh, I hope you're blessed and keep being blessed or whatever. Um, and that's neither here or there, but i tell you, you know what I'm saying? Um, don't nobody want to work to a job where you know they trying to make you quit or trying to stress you out or whatever, or just trying to push your buttons. If you keep pushing and pushing somebody's buttons, after a while, you know, they're going to react, you know what I'm saying? They're going to keep pushing your buttons, and then when you react, they're going to be like, oh, you're a monster, you know? That's the old, that's the oldest trick in the book, you know? So, uh, I, know, I, I know what you're doing, and I know what you did, so it's all good, and salute to you, you know what I mean? I'm going to move on, um, and... Uh, it is what it is, you know. I mean, you lost a good driver. I mean, um, there's a lot of drivers out here floating around now. And, you know, there's a lot of companies out here that are getting shut down, too. But, you know, if you don't watch your P's and Q's, you, might, you just might be one of those, one of those companies that, 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 uh, that's, on, that's, 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 that's on the bullseye. At the wow, you know, look at the look at the news and look at Celadon and 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 uh, uh, I think they're trying to sue Western Express now and all this and they got you know lawsuits out against a lot of these trucking companies, a lot of these big trucking companies. You know, what I mean, they 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 they're gunning for, you know, and it doesn't really matter. I guess a lot of the, if you if you're doing a lot of underhanded on the table stuff. Or whatever they're watching for you, you know what I mean. So, you know, you 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 think that you're hurt hurting these drivers by cheating them out of miles and cheating them out of their money and all this kind of stuff. And you know what I mean. You think because you are a, a big name and all this kind of stuff, you can't be brought down. as Celadon, as uh, those other companies out there. Yeah, you know I mean, if you, if you can be brought down or not, you know, um, it, it, America is changing. Um, there's a lot of black drivers out there now, not just black drivers, but any, any race drivers, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you're not the only ones out there just because when you go into the truck stop, they're playing country music. Don't mean nothing. You know what I mean, well, we're coming. There's a lot of other drivers coming. You know what I mean? And you're not the only ones out there driving now. And that's men or women out there. That's discriminating against people or, or, or any race. You know what I mean, uh, get used to it. America is changing. You know what I mean, and you need to change with it. You know, uh, look around you. You know, uh, look at everything that's happening. You know, you, you, you got to see that racism is dying. You know, and sooner or later it will get to you. You know what I mean? And they will put an end to your mess. You know, shape up. Shape up. You know, all this favoritism and all this trying to uh, uh, single people out and all this kind of stuff just because you don't like the way they look or dress or or how they carry themselves, their persona or whatever like that. You hating. You don't know a person from Adam. And you just look at them and, and, and don't like them. I mean, your day coming. It's 2020. I mean, 2020 about to come in. It's time for a change. It's time for a change. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Everybody that 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 all this mess that that was in 2019, you need to leave it in 2019. You know, because a new day is coming. There's a new sheriff in town, and his name is God. And 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 you could call him. Jesus, God, whatever you want to call him. But 
you know, the Bible talks of it. The, the, the Bible talks of it. That the, the, the riches of the wealthy will transfer to the ones that, that need it, that really need it. And that day is coming. It's at hand. Watch yourself. Watch yourself. Because fair is fair. And right is right. You know. And a lot of wrong. You can't keep doing wrong and get away with it. And expect to uh, uh, come out on top. You know. Because everything that you reap, you will sow. I mean, everything that you sow, you will reap. And it will come back to you. It, it, it may not be tomorrow or the next day, but it will come back to you. You know, and I go for any kind of griminess. You know, your day coming. It's coming. You know, you can't keep being grimy and uh, you, you think that you can jump into the cliques with people and stuff. And oh, because this person don't like this person, I can jump in the clique with them. So all of y'all can get in Walmart and speak to one another and act like you love one another or like one another or whatever like that. You know, it ain't gaining you nothing. What do you gain out of it? Nothing. I mean, just so you can say hello or hi or what's up or whatever and then walk off and then that other person still thinking, oh, I, still, I don't like that. Oh, I don't like that person at all. I, 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 you know, they still thinking bad thoughts about you. I mean, but you're doing all of that just so you can have some kind of status or whatever. It ain't real and ain't authentic. And any love that ain't no real love or authentic love ain't worth having. Think about it. It's coming. God is changing a whole lot of things. Changing. Jay, he's out.